Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to another very exciting video tutorial. So in this video tutorial, you are going to be learning about UI table views and you're going to learn how you can incorporate this UI table view into your very own iOS application. Without further ado, let's get started into it. So first I'm going to get started by opening up Xcode and then I'm going to create a new Xcode project. I'm going to call this uh, UI table view. Actually, let's just call this table view application. I mean, that's fine, right? And make sure your language is Swift and your device is iPhone. And now you click Next. Okay. Now I'm going to save this Xcode project into my desktop. And now I'm going to go into our main dot storyboard and drag in a table view from there by filtering out in the object library for a table view. This object library should return you a table view, the good old plain table view. Make, be careful not to drag the table view controller or the cell and make sure to expand this table view such that it fills the entire view controller. And now what we can do is to pin this UI table view onto the four edges of this view controller screen. Okay, so this will actually ensure that regardless of any screen device, this table view is actually maximizes the amount of space that it uses in the user's screen window. Let's, now let's add four constraints and let me connect this table view into code. I'm going to give this a name of you. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to give this a name of table view. We don't need the UI. And there you go. All right. So now that we've connected this table view into our code, now we can give this table view some custom behavior. Okay. First thing we're going to do, well, we are going to conform to the UI table view delegate. Okay. By conforming to the UI table view delegate, this will actually allow us to modify the table view in terms of the layout of the table view. For example, how many rows should the table view have? How many sections should the table view have? These are just simple examples of what does defining a table view or modifying a table view in terms of layout mean. We also need to confirm the second protocol, which is UI table view data source. And this here essentially means that we are given the privilege to be able to modify the UI table view in terms of content. For example, what text content should the cell have? What images should the cell have? What should the section header be? What should the section title be? Okay, so essentially this kinds of acts as the supply of data for your table view. Now Xcode is giving me an error because I haven't implemented the two required functions whenever we conform to these two protocols. Okay, so first we need to implement the the number of rows in the table view. Next, we need to implement the cell for row and index path. So the number of rows in section function essentially does gives us a way to specify the number of rows for the table view. In this case, I want five rows in the table view. Hence, I'm going to make this five. And this cell for row essentially allows us to define content for that particular cell. Okay, so first let me just create a new instance of the UI table view cell class. Okay, I'm gonna create, I just created a UI table view cell object. And now I'm gonna set the text content of the particular cell to be, let's say, hello world as a, as a starting point. And finally, we want to return cell. So how this, how this works is that actually this table view renders this cell five times because remember we specified that we wanted five cells over here five rows hence it renders the cell five times because one cell is in one row so it renders this five times and for every one of the five cells it gives it a text content of hello world okay and then it returns cell for that particular row or for the index path that's passed in here okay so essentially that's how these two functions work together. And the last thing we need to do, okay, is to set the delegate and the data source of this table view to self. Because right now, this table view that's connected right here doesn't know where should we get 
its data form or what its delegate is. Hence, we need to tell this table view to actually follow the instructions that we have defined over here. So let me just quickly set that table view dot delegate equals self and let's not forget the data source as well so there you go and now let's build and run it and see how it looks on the virtual device And now as you can see, the word hello world is rendered five times on five different cells on five different rows. Isn't that amazing? Now let's actually give this cells custom data. So instead of printing hello world the same time over and over again, let's give this different text content. We can achieve that by using an array. I'm going to create an array called data. Okay, so create elements. Okay, just create random elements that you want the table view to render so in this case I'm going to be super boring and I'm just going to have the first second third fourth and fifth strings you can be creative and type in whatever you want and to actually put this data into practice what we can do is we can set the text content of this cell to be whatever uh, whatever row is being rendered. So let me just explain that again. So essentially what this means, what this does is that we, for the row that is being rendered, we are going to set that to be whatever element is that on that data array. So for example, if the table view is rendering the first row, so it's going to get, it's going to grab the first string here and it's going to slot in here. Hence, the first row is going to have a value, a string value of first and for the second, so the set for the second row, when the table view is rendering the second row, because it's really on the second row, it's going to get the second element, which is second, and pass it in here, and it's going to set it as a text content. So now, the second row should have a string value of second, and same for the third, fourth, and fifth. Okay? And now let's build and run it and see how it updates on the virtual device. Now, as you can see, we have a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Brilliant. Now let's say we change this to six. Let's take a look at what happens. It caused our entire application to crash, which is a bad thing and we always do not want this to happen. And that's because we are trying to render a row, the sixth row. We're trying to render the sixth row that is beyond the range or is beyond the boundaries, beyond the limitations of that particular data array. Because remember, we only have five elements. We can only render up to five rows. We can't render up to the sixth row. So to actually fix this, we can use something called data binding. Essentially, what we're doing is we're binding, we're creating a system of binding to this data. And by doing this, this actually allows us to be more flexible and dynamic, which means whenever we delete an element or we add on to an element to this array, this here automatically gets updated and we do not have to manually update it, which is a really, really, really important tool and a really cool feature as well. Another to build and run it, we just see that the application no longer crashes, which is a good thing. There you go. Brilliant. And now the last thing I want you to take note, a bonus feature that I want you to have, I want you to know, is that whenever we click on this cell, the table view sort of gets frozen over there. So to actually fix that, what we can do is to, is to be notified that on the event, whenever the user presses or taps a cell on the table view. And to be notified of these events, what we can do is to implement a function called did select row. Okay, so from this we are notified 
of the event in which whenever the user taps a row on the table view and whenever the user did actually select a row what we want to do is to deselect with an animation okay so i'm going to pass in an index path that's passing over here so let's say the user is tapping at the third row we are passing in the third row we are deselecting it at the third row because the user selected at the at the third row as well so essentially we are deselecting at the row in which the user tapped on and because i want to make this animated hence i'm going to pass in a boolean true value and now if we were to build and run it we should see we have a fully functional yet simple application that I hope gave you a basic grounding, a basic foundation in using UI table views. Okay, so as you can see, this ends ended off with a nice animation. So I hope this gives you a basic grounding. Um, I hope you understand UI table views a little bit better. Okay, so if you don't, maybe you can view watch the video or view watch the parts that you are unclear of. So regardless, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, be sure to smash that like button and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Until then, see you in the next video. This is Ben. Peace out.